The Dornier DO-17 was a medium-class bomber, first used by the German Condor Legion during the Spanish Civil War. During the early phases of World War II, it was heavily deployed in bomber and reconnaissance configurations. The DO-17 spearheaded the Blitzkrieg campaigns of Poland, France, Belgium, and Holland, demonstrating its combat reliability. Nonetheless, as the war raged on, it began to be overshadowed by more powerful aircraft used by both the Allies and the Luftwaffe itself, such as the Junkers Ju-88. During campaigns where the enemy had little air support and few anti-air defenses, the DO-17 could carry on its missions with ease. Such was the case with the invasions of the Balkans, Greece, and Crete. But when the Third Reich faced down the British Royal Air Force during the London raids and the rising power of the Soviet Union, the DO-17 lagged behind for its light armor and limited bomb load capacity. The aircraft was nicknamed the Fliegende Bleistift, or Flying Pencil, for its thin form. Some 2,140 Dornier DO-17 bombers were produced during the war, with many farmed out to Germany's Axis partners. The German Rearmament When World War I ended in 1918, the once powerful German Empire was forced to sign the Treaty of Versailles that prohibited it from developing new military technology and limited its army to 100,000 men. In the early 1930s, when Adolf Hitler rose to power, the victorious nations of World War I would soon realize that humiliating Germany was an error, for under Hitler's leadership, the country quickly evolved, becoming nearly as powerful as Great Britain and France put together. As one of the Führer's ambitions was to rebuild a powerful army, the Third Reich motivated scientists and engineers to develop new technologies. With the creation of the Ministry of Aviation under the leadership of Hermann Göring, the Luftwaffe, or German Air Force, was born. The first military aircraft employed by the Luftwaffe were simple conversions of commercial airplanes. Such was the case of the Dornier DO-17, produced in 1913 by aviation entrepreneur Claude Dornier and his aircraft company Dornier GmbH. The commercial Dornier DO-17 was a mail plane with a slender fuselage configuration that resulted in limited passenger seating split into two areas. The flight deck was at the extreme forward of the aircraft, making it very narrow and light at the cost of limited cargo capacity. It was powered by two engines that sat upon a monoplane wing assembly with one vertical tail fin. The prototype, although innovative for its time, was rejected in 1934 for its split cabin arrangement. Instead, it was suggested that with the proper modifications, it could be suitable for military use. Dornier then removed the passenger cargo holds, installed an internal bomb bay, and divided the one vertical tail fin into two smaller ones. Development and Design After being admitted to the Luftwaffe, German aviators appreciated the DO-17's rugged status and its flight handling during initial testing. Production of two models quickly began. The DO-17E1 was a medium bomber capable of an 1,100-pound arsenal bomb load. At the same time, the DO-17F1 was a dedicated reconnaissance aircraft. The only difference between both airplanes was that the recon version replaced the bomb bay in favor of two reconnaissance cameras and extra fuel capacity for increased operational ranges. The wings featured a straight leading edge, which curved in a near-perfect semicircle into the trailing edge. The fuselage was 51 feet long. It was thin and narrow, earning it the flying pencil nickname. When engaged in combat, it would prove hard to hit. Additionally, twin vertical stabilizers in the fuselage increased lateral stability. The forward fuselage had a stepped cockpit with a glazed nose, but after the Spanish Civil War, it would be definitively changed in favor of a raised cockpit roof with an undernose gondola named Bola by the Germans. The cockpit had an excellent panoramic view. The four crew members consisted of a pilot, a bombardier, and two gunners that all shared the same cockpit. The undercarriage had a traditional arrangement with a pair of main landing gear legs and a tailwheel that were fully retractable. Armament The glazed nose housed a gunner with access to a forward-facing MG-15 machine gun. The lower gondola-type flight deck floor had another machine gun to counter enemy attacks from below and the rear. Overall, the DO-17 had access to four MG-15 machine guns that ensured it could defend itself from all flanks in case of an attack. The late war models could even be fitted with eight machine guns to increase its firepower. The MG-15 had a 7.92mm caliber that could reach its targets with a fast fire rate. Some German crews also equipped the DO-17s with backward-firing flamethrowers. Its intended use was not to burn enemy fighters at high altitudes, but to blind and disorient them momentarily with black, oily smoke. This would prove crucial when an enemy threatened to take down the bomber from behind. Allied pilots reported that their windscreens would often end up covered in oil for seconds, leaving them vulnerable to German fire. One famous case of flamethrower use occurred during the Battle of Britain, when RAF pilot Ray Holmes was hit with one from 400 yards away. The bomb loads of the DO-17 ranged from 1,000 to over 2,000 pounds, depending on Dornier's variants. 
the Spanish Civil War. The DO-17 had its baptism of fire during the Spanish Civil War between 1936 and 1939. The conflict saw face-to-face the forces of National Socialism and International Communism. The forces of the Spanish Republic were supported by the USSR, the British, and other nations, while the rebellious nationalists under General Francisco Franco were aided by Adolf Hitler himself and Benito Mussolini. Germany sent Franco the Condor Legion, a unit of aviators equipped with new DO-17 bombers, Junkers Ju-87 dive bombers, Messerschmitt Bf-109 fighters, and Panzer light tanks. Both configurations of the DO-17, the bomber and the recon plane, were extensively tested on their combat performance throughout the conflict to further enhance their capabilities. German aviators appreciated the excellent handling characteristics of the aircraft. It was faster than any other aircraft of its time. Many historians have postulated that without the support that Hitler gave to Francisco Franco, he would not have defeated the Socialist Republic. In many respects, it was thanks to the sheer air superiority of the German aircraft in the conflict. Based on their performance during the Spanish Civil War, both versions of the DO-17 received an engine upgrade. The DO-17 bomber was given Brahmo 323 Fafner 9-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engines of 900 to 1,000 horsepower. The DO-17 recon was fitted with the BMW 132N series. Both versions were also improved with more storage capacity for up to 2,200 pounds. The DO-17 at war. When Germany began the invasion of Poland on September 1, 1939, 370 Dornier DO-17s divided across nine Kampfgruppens were launched to support ground troops. The first objective hit by DO-17 flight groups was the railway bridge at Dershau. Through overwhelming air superiority, the DO-17 operated safely over the Polish skies, often conducting strategic bombarding missions at lower levels. The aircraft bomber became the Luftwaffe's offensive punch in the early phases of the war. The furious Blitzkrieg triumphs were spearheaded by the recon planes and the heavy bombardment of unique objectives. The Battle of Britain The DO-17 was utilized in similar roles when the invasion of France occurred in early 1940. Dorniers were used all across the major Western campaigns to force the British to back out from mainland France. The Luftwaffe succeeded when, in a joint operation with the Wehrmacht, the German here was able to encircle the last Allied forces in the port city of Dunkirk. Overconfident with their defenses, the French were ill-equipped, both militarily and politically, to deliver a counterattack against the German onslaught once they proved unable to hold back the advance. With France's capitulation, everything was set for the Battle of Britain and the planning of Operation Sea Lion. On July 10, 1940, some 210 DO-17 bombers and recon versions were ready to take the fight to the British. Between the months of August and September, Germany realized that the Luftwaffe, although powerful, could not subjugate the numerically superior and highly trained RAF pilots fighting in their own airspace. It was during this campaign that the DO-17 showed its age. Its delicate fuselage and limited bomb load capacity began to be a problem. Many aircraft were quickly taken down by anti-aircraft batteries set up by the British defenders. Featuring superior speed, the new Allied fighters could match and oftentimes surpass her once heralded performance. The Fall of the DO-17 After 1940, the Luftwaffe began converting to the newer and more prolific Junkers Ju-88 medium bombers. However, many DO-17s were still used for the Balkans campaigns and the invasions of Greece and Crete. At the time of the Wehrmacht invasion of Russia through Operation Barbarossa on June 22, 1941, only a single DO-17 airgroup existed. The remaining DO-17s were quickly replaced by the Ju-88. Others were sold to Axis allies like Croatia, Italy, and other Eastern European forces like Finland. In 1941, the Finns had already fallen to the might of the Soviet army during the Winter War of November 1939 and March 1940. With the renewal of a new offensive, Finland allied itself with the Third Reich to defeat the Russians. The Luftwaffe delivered the last five existing DO-17 Z-2 aircraft to the Finnish Air Arm for bombing missions. These aircraft soldiered on until the middle of 1944. After that, no more DO-17s were ever produced. After the war ended, most were destroyed or forgotten, to the point that aviation historians thought that there was not a single authentic DO-17 left to display at museums. Everything changed when, in 2008, humble fishermen off the coast of Kent discovered an aircraft mausoleum near the Goodwin Islands in England. Some aircraft began to re-emerge from the seabed, and one of them proved to be a DO-17, used during the London raids of 1940. The RAF museum quickly got to work to save what was left of the only remaining DO-17. Since then, more DO-17s from private collectors have been spotted across Europe. After all, it seems that the trusty old DO-17 still has stories to tell, more than 70 years after its initial flight. <laughs>